Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. I, uh, I want to welcome our witnesses and I'll single out uh, Congressman Oberstar. We go all the way back to uh, uh, when we served together on that committee in the, in the House in 1987. At that time, if you remember, you were the chairman of the Aviation Subcommittee. I was, I think, the only commercial pilot on the committee. And we, we really got busy and solved a lot of things, and that's endured all the way to this day. And just I have to say to you, Madam Chairman, that I, I have had extensive conversations just this week with Congressman Overstar because we both share the concern of the crisis in the Highway Trust Fund. It's going to have to be resolved. And also, welcome my colleague, Senator Coleman, who's been very busy the last week. Uh, and who worked tirelessly to secure emergency funding after the collapse of the I-35 uh, bridge last year. And I was honored to help him in his state in time of need. And he's one of the primary requesters, along with the chairman and me, of the GAO study that will be released uh, today. Also, I want to extend my warm welcome to Gary Ridley. He'll be on the third panel. Gary Ridley, hold your hand up and make sure they know who you are. Uh, he is unquestionably the best director anywhere in America. Uh, I, rec I recall when a, a, a Democrat governor was elected, Madam Chairman, to, I called up and said, I only have one request. You got the best director there, and he's, I don't even know if he's a Democrat or Republican, but he is the best, and of course he's still on, on the job. So we work all kinds of hours. I've called him in the middle of the night. He's called me in the middle of the night. And he is very much concerned about this, and this is we want to be really bring this out in this, even though this is a bridge hearing, uh, I say to my good friend uh, Gary Ridley, we want to talk about the crisis that we're faced with right now and, and what our options are. Uh, finally, they want to welcome our new FHWA administrator, Thomas Madison. I talked to him before this meeting. I'm not sure he may be having second thoughts right now, and, but this is his, his initial meeting, and we're glad to have you here. I'm a little concerned uh, this hearing is a repeat of a hearing we had last uh, in, in September of last year. We've been having about one highway hearing a month and as we gear up for reauthorization. This pace uh, doesn't allow us the opportunity to retread the same territory. In fact, most of the organizations represented at the last bridge hearing are here again today. Now, this hearing is designed to look at both the bridge program as a whole uh, and Congress of Overstar's uh, bridge bill, which passed the House and introduced in the Senate by Senator Klobuchar. Now, since this is otherwise the same hearing that we had last year, I will focus my comments on this proposed legislation. I believe this is not the right bill at the right time. It, it adds, in my opinion, and I've talked to a lot of the people in our state of Oklahoma, uh, more red tape um, uh, to a portion of the highway program that already has uh, many bureaucratic hurdles that states don't like. In fact, some states transfer money, since I believe this happened in the state of Oklahoma, from that account, the bridge program, to other more flexible programs in order to have more flexibility in fixing their bridges. Uh, we are a year from the expiration of uh, safety. Uh, any major policy changes should be handled in the context of reauthorization. Otherwise, they distract from the overall goal of getting compre a comprehensive bill done on time. I agree the current uh, bridge program needs revision, but this bill moves, I believe, in the wrong direction. I'm concerned that in the wake of the Minnesota tragedy and the series of high-profile news stories about the poor condition of the nation's uh, bridges, that we're disproportionately for, uh, focusing on a single aspect of the system. It is certainly true that our bridges are in terrible disrepair. And as I've noticed before, in my state of Oklahoma, I'll wait until uh, the Director Ridley is testifying and ask him this question. I think today we, are, uh, we have the, the largest number of structurally deficient and functionally obsolete bridges in the entire country. Uh, we, I think, are, uh, are now dead last in the condition of our bridges. We used to be tied with two other states. So, you know, we're very much concerned about this. Let me emphasize once again that I agree the existing bridge program needs work to make it more usable for states. But with all due respect to my, my colleagues, I, this bill doesn't do that, and it should be done in the context of a larger reorganization, reauthorization bill. You know, I said the same thing, Madam Chairman, to... Uh, uh, some of my Republicans yesterday when I addressed the conference, I said, you know, if you're uh, look, talking about the Highway Trust Fund crisis that we have, they're wanting to get other things accomplished by adding amendments to this. I said, that's fine. They, we need improvement. But in the wake of the 09 reauthorization bill, that's where we ought to be addressing these new uh, problems that exist. Now, in closing, I want to comment on the precarious situation 
uh, in, in as far as the Highway Trust Fund, Chairman Boxer and I have been working for several months to get a fix on the Senate floor. Despite our, despite our best efforts, we've uh, officially bumped up against a hard deadline because I understand that as early as this week, the Secretary will begin not fully reimbursing states. On Monday, the Oklahoma Transportation Commissioner has decided to delay $80 million uh, of ready-to-go projects. Uh, you know, they've already been been set out and with the people hired, ready to picks and shovels, ready to go to work. And and uh, perhaps another $40 million if Congress doesn't act this week, a shortfall. So it's got, it's got to be done. I expect, suspect other states have the same problems. And I know that I, in talking to Congressman Oberstar about this, he shares my concern over this crisis that we're faced with. Uh, inaction uh, not only means critical projects not getting done, but construction workers are going to be laid off, and we, we don't want this to happen. So we, those of us who have been around a while remember when we used to have, uh, always have a surplus. And uh, you remember that, Congressman Oberstar, we had surpluses in the Highway Trust Fund up until the time, boy, longer after I left uh, and came over to the Senate. Uh, and I remember objecting very much back in 1998 when they took $8 billion out of the Highway Trust Fund and put it into the, into the general fund uh, as an effort in the 1998 Balanced Budget Act, I believe it was. And I said at that time, this is a mistake. Because, and it's, it's, it's less than honest because people, I think probably the most popular tax we have is the tax you pay at the pump because people know and believe it's going to go to improve our road structure, our bridges, and all these things. But it's totally dishonest to take money out of that and those people finding out now that that money is being used for other purposes. So I think there's a fix there. I wholeheartedly uh, endorse it. I've talked to my colleagues about it, and I think that we need to undo the damage that was done back in 1998, and we've got to at least temporarily fix. The crisis would be behind us, the immediate crisis. So hoping, I'm hoping that we'll be able to do that, Madam Chairman.